we are talking about the spike protein and how this plays a role in Omicron. This is the new COVID variant. This variant has a lot of us concerned for a number of reasons. Um, what we're gonna talk about today is the spike protein, what it is, why it's important, and then how it relates to Omicron. So I want you to watch till the end. Guys, I'm Dr. Jen Cottle, a practicing family physician and on-air health expert and video creator. Uh, cases are increasing of this variant. So far, there's preliminary evidence that suggests there's an increased risk of reinfection. We know this has been called a variant of concern by the World Health Organization. The variant has been detected at faster rates than previous surges in infection, uh, suggesting it may have a growth advantage. Again, this is all according to the World Health Organization. And we need to know if our vaccines work against this variant. Now comes the spike protein, guys, okay? It's actually, I have a picture here of, of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus. You can see this, and I know you guys have all seen this picture with all the red spikes, okay? Guys, those those red spikes are the spike proteins. There's a number of them on the virus. And you may say, well, what's what's going on with the spike protein? Why is this important? Um, well, basically, the spike protein is important for helping that SARS-CoV-2 virus. That's the virus that causes COVID. This spike protein is very crucial and helpful, necessary for getting that virus into our cells. That's right. It's almost like a lock and a key, basically. Um, when the SARS-CoV-2 virus enters the body, it's spike protein. That's one of the uh, one of the sort of the red things that are coming up out, out of the cell. You can see here binds with a receptor on our cells uh, and enters into our cells, and that sort of sets off a cascade of things. Okay. We know that in this particular variant, there have been a number of mutations found. It's one of the reasons why we are so concerned about this variant. Many of the articles and reports that I've seen say that there may be as many as 30 or more mutations in this spike protein. That is important, guys, because that may affect how well it's able to get in and do its job. But the other thing you need to understand is that one of the main targets for vaccines against COVID is this spike protein. So not only does the spike protein help the virus get into cells, but we've also used this as a target of many of our vaccines. In other words, for many of our vaccines, that's how they work. So the issue is, if all of a sudden there are all these mutations or changes in the spike protein, will the vaccines that we have now actually work against this new version called Omicron? Will it work against this new COVID variation called Omicron that's got mutations or changes in the spike protein? Will our COVID vaccines recognize it? Will it be effective? We don't actually know right now. Don't get me wrong, there are other mutations uh, that we are likely seeing with Omicron. Mutations that we're seeing with the spike protein are just uh, an example of some of them, uh, but some that are very important. So like I said, we are learning about this entire thing. There are other mutations. There's just still a lot more that we need to learn. So I, I wanted to sort of explain this because these mutations are some of the things that in the beginning, as I mentioned, what the World Health Organization is saying in terms of, you know, its growth potential and the number of cases that are increasing and its potential potential for reinfection, these mutations are what is ultimately concerning us. Um, and there are estimates that there are many other mutations as well, but certainly those mutations in the spike protein, which there are many, uh, may very well change the behavior and we suspect has changed the behavior of this virus, uh, this variant, but also may potentially affect how well our vaccines are working. So you say, well, what do I do? What do we do? Well, first of all, we have to let the scientists do their work. They are doing their work. Vaccine makers and scientists are quickly trying to figure out exactly what this means for us. The vaccines I got, my family got, my patients have got, are they going to work against this? Well, we have to wait and see. So we have to let them do the work. But until then, it also means we have to do a few other things. For those of you who have not gotten vaccinated, I would not go another day without being vaccinated. With this new variant on top of Delta and so many other questions we have, I wouldn't let another day go being unvaccinated. Vaccinate yourself, vaccinate your kids, get your boosters. The other thing I would say is we need international vaccine equity. There are many countries that have not seen vaccines at all that don't have the access, don't have the opportunity. We need to get vaccines to everyone because as, as I've said before, one of the things that allows viruses to change and mutate is their ability to spread. The more they spread amongst people who are unvaccinated, the more chance they have to change and create mutations like what we are seeing. So our best bet is to get vaccinated. Guys, also wear your mask, 
social distance. Don't let up. Uh, be vigilant. I'll, I'll, we'll get through this. I always say that. Make sure you keep it locked here. I'll keep giving you updates as I have them, but just understand how the spike protein plays a role in this particular variant with all the mutations and the questions it's raising and what we still need to know. Guys, I'm Dr. Jen Cottle. Uh, uh, for those of you on Facebook, if you've not liked and followed my page, I invite you to do so. Uh, for those of you on YouTube, if you've not subscribed to my channel or click the little bell, I invite you to do so. I have um, a subscription book groups on both YouTube and Facebook. I hope you consider joining those. And on Facebook, uh, for those of you who send stars, I respond to you personally. Guys, um, stay safe. I'll be back soon.